Hello everyone, my name is Steven Liu. I'm a technical marketing engineer here at Cisco. In this video, I'll be demonstrating on how to configure high availability for Cisco Catalyst 8000V running on Azure. Before we dive any deeper, let's have an overall of Catalyst 8000V high availability in the cloud. As companies are migrating to public cloud, they want to have a redundant and resilient network design to mitigate any potential network or node failure in the cloud. A typical use case for the Cisco Catalyst 8000V is to interconnect two subnets within a virtual network. You can deploy Cisco Catalyst 8000V router between the public subnet and the private subnet. In networking architecture, the Cisco Catalyst 8000V router could represent a single point of failure for accessing the backend resources. Therefore, to mitigate this, it is important to deploy two Cisco Catalyst 8000Vs between two subnets and configure high availability for the two virtual routers. Let's briefly go over the five steps for the high availability configurations. First, we're going to enable Gas Shield and install the HA package. For the second step, we will create BFD tunnel between the two Catalyst 8000V. For the third step, we will configure the redundancy nodes. In the fourth step, we will go to the Azure portal to configure access control to allow the CAKV API to modify the Azure route table. At the end, we will verify the high availability is working as expected by triggering a failover event. Before we dive in, let's briefly talk about the topology that we'll be using in the demonstration setup. As you can see, there are two VNets in the topology that represent a branch location and a headquarter location. For the HA VNet on the right side, we deploy two CAKV that we'll be using to configure high availability on. And they're both connected to the application VM in the private subnet. Note that there's a BFD tunnel setup between the active and the backup CAKV for failure detection. In the branch VNet on the left-hand side, we have a branch CAKV that, are, that is connected to each of the CAKV in the HA VNet through IPsec tunnels. And there is a branch host VM in the private subnet that is connected to the branch CAKV. By default, when we initiate traffic from the branch VM to the application VM, the traffic will pass through the branch CAKV to the active CAKV based on the route table that we have set up in the HAVNet. So let's talk about what happened when the active CAKV goes down. The BFD tunnel will detect the failure of the active CAKV and you will trigger the Azure REST API to initiate a change in the route table. The next hub address in the route table will change from the active CAKV IP address 10.0.1.4 to the backup CAKV IP address 10.0.1.5. So the traffic will pass through the backup CAKV instead with a minimal downtime there are only a few seconds. When the active CAKV is turned back on again, the Azure API will automatically change the route table back to the default without any action required. Now that we're back onto the active CAKV after rebooting it, we will go ahead and enable Gas Shield if it's not running yet. Now we simply go into the Gas Shield environment and type in the following command to install the HA packet. Once it's complete, we will make sure the HA packet is installed successfully. We will go ahead and repeat this in the backup CAKV as well. We will enable peer failure detection between the active CAKV and the backup CAKV by configuring a BFD tunnel between them and enabling the EIGRP routing protocol. Now that we are on the active CAKV global configuration mode, we will first configure the ISA KMP policy, transform set, 
an IPsec profile for the IPsec tunnel between the active and the backup CAKV by using the following command. Same commands will be used on the backup CAKV side as well. We will go ahead and repeat this in the backup CAKV as well. Now we will go ahead and set up tunnel interface between the two virtual routers. Let's call it tunnel 11. We're on the active CAKV now and we will assign the tunnel address to be 192.168.101.1 on this side and 101.2 on the backup CAKV side. Notice we have to specify the tunnel destination here. We will have to use the public IP address of the backup CAKV. Similarly, once we are repeating this configuration on the backup CAKV side, we will type in the active CAKV public address in this command. Now we're going to enable the EIGRP protocol on both of the CAKV. We will go ahead and repeat this in the backup CAKV as well. For the third step, we will go ahead and configure redundancy nodes on both of the CAKV. Let's first get into the gas shield environment of the active CAKV. We will run the following Python script with these parameters. Similarly, we will repeat it on the backup CAKV but with different inputs for the parameters. For the fourth step, we will configure the access control for the route table in the Azure portal. Let's click into the active CAKV. Go to Identity. Turn on the system assigned status. Now we will repeat it for the backup CAKV as well. We will now go to the HA route table. Go to the access control. We will add a row assignment to this route table. Select Network Contributor. Select Assign Access to both the active and backup CAKV that are associated with this particular route table. Now the route table is able to be updated once it's triggered by the API. Now that we're going to verify the high availability is set up properly on the CAKV. As you can see, now that I'm console into the branch host VM, application VM, and the active CAKV, I will go ahead and start initiating traffic from the branch host VM to the application HA VM. In the meanwhile, I'm going to verify the traffic is passing through the active CAKV based on the route table. As you can see, the traffic is passing through the 10.0.1.4 address before the failover. Now that we're going to reload the active CAKV to stimulate an outage. Right before we do that, let's take a look at the route table. Notice the nest hub address in the route table is 10.0.1.4 right now. It will be triggered by the Azure REST API and automatically change to the backup CAKV IP address 10.0.1.5 once the active CAKV goes down. Now that the active CAKV is down, we will be seeing a short temporary loss of connection between the two VMs before the change take effect in the route table. As you can see, the connection is re-established again. 
we're going to go ahead and observe the changes that took place. The traffic is now passing through the backup CAKV 10.0.1.5. We're going to refresh the route table to see that the new Nest Hub IP address is changed as well. The active CAKV is going to take a few minutes to reboot, and once it's back on running again, the BFD tunnel will detect it and trigger the Azure API to change the route table back to the default. So the traffic will be passing through the active CAKV again without any further action from our end. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this video to that. Now that we can see the traffic is passing through the 10.0.1.4 address again, and the changes in the route table has taken place. And this is it, simple and done. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Cheers.